Having bigger tires on your Toyota Tacoma can be a bummer. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive JT. And that's right, there are a few things that kind of can be a bummer about having bigger tires on your Toyota Tacoma. You know, I have to say, if you're like me, it's one of the first things that you want to do, right? You get your Tacoma home, and unless you had some bigger tires on it in, uh, in a different trim level, it's one of the first things you want to do. Get rid of those nasty stock wheels and those nasty all-season tires and put something bigger and more aggressive on it. I've done it on all of the most recent Toyota Tacomas I've had. And let me say right off the bat that none of these reasons would preclude me from doing it. I mean, I love the look of bigger, more aggressive tires on the Toyota Tacoma, and I'm willing to put up with these other little problems, little bummers to go ahead and do it. So let's start off. Right off the bat, of course, it's gonna be the price. I mean, the bigger tire you go, obviously, the more money you're gonna spend. You know, you're probably into about 100 to 150, maybe more dollars per tire, depending again upon how big you go, over the stock all seasons. And that's the other thing. What do you do with the all seasons you have? I mean, you could sell them, but you're really gonna get pennies on the dollar for them. Nobody wants used tires for a lot of money. So they're gonna cost you more. They're gonna be heavier, which means they're gonna suck a little bit of the power from the Toyota Tacoma. And it's not like the Tacoma is a power beast to begin with. We all know that the Tacoma is a bit underpowered. And it definitely is a bit underpowered when it comes to acceleration. It's the reason I put the Sprint Booster on mine, to get rid of that lag so I would have some semblance of acceleration, even with the heavier tire setup that I have now. Of course, if you're gonna go with a spare, and you probably should, going to have to buy a fifth tire. And then there's the challenge of deciding where to mount it. Depending on the size you go with, it can be put in the same spot as the OEM version or the stock size version in the back. But you might have to beat out those little feet that are under a little bit just to make sure that it's got enough clearance that it sits in there well. I did that myself with a, I think it was a 285-70R17 or maybe an 18, I don't remember. And it does fit, but you do have to pound a little bit. Next up, if of course, is gonna be whether it actually rubs or not. You know, there's so much controversy out there when it comes to rubbing with bigger tires. You know, it's funny to me when you push people. I just saw a video the other day. Guy was talking about putting bigger tires on his Toyota Tacoma. There were no problems, no rub, nothing like that. But I think as he was talking, he kind of, uh, felt like he needed to be more honest maybe or had the realization that what he was saying was a bunch of BS Because he did admit that in certain circumstances in certain driving conditions He did have a rub. He even showed where it was up in the front and the back part of the front fender well So you have to be careful with that and there's nothing worse In my opinion than going ahead and putting on those nice great looking bigger tires and then having a rub. It just kind of takes the air right out of your sail, you know? You feel like everything is good, everybody told you it would be good, and then you have a problem. So you start to think, gee, is it your truck? It's not your truck, it's just the way it is. Unless you stay within certain tolerances, if you will, and offset, you're gonna have a rubbing problem in certain circumstances. You know, when I did it on my Voodoo Blue Tacoma, truck looked awesome. This was the first time. And I did the lift too. And I pulled out of a McDonald's parking lot, it had a big dip, and I had to turn while I was doing it. Man, did that thing rub. I was so disheartened by that. I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? I just had the lift done. I wasn't going to change the lift. So I ended up going with a little bit smaller tire. Uh, it solved the problem, but still, you know, I didn't get the money that I had originally from buying those first set because you're never gonna get full price, obviously. That was kind of a bummer. Next up, and this is just kind of annoying, is tire pressure. For some reason, the bigger tires just do not hold pressure. 
it seems to me like about once a month or once every month and a half, I've got to add air to the tires, all of them. It's not like it's just one, like maybe I have a defective tire or something. Oh no, it's all of them. They just do not hold tire pressure as well as the stock version does, the smaller all seasons. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's a combination of a new wheel along with those tires. Maybe they flex a little more because there's more tread wall. Maybe they're just more affected by the environment. You know, I've always noticed, and this is with either all season or aftermarkets, when a big weather front comes through, and there's a pretty substantial temperature change or a pressure change, barometric pressure. I seem to lose tire pressure. I don't know why, I guess maybe the tire shrinks a little bit when those things happen. Obviously when tires heat up, they expand. And of course the tire pressure increases. Maybe it's some function of the temperature dropping and the tire shrinking that it slightly loses seal or something. I don't really know the physics behind it, the science behind it, but I know it happens. And that's kind of a bummer. I hate having to screw around with putting air in tires. It's just one of those little pet peevey things I have, kind of like washing it as well. I don't really dig doing that either. I do it, but not as often as I, as I should, I guess. The last thing that I'll mention, and this gets back to the spare tire, and the weight of those aftermarket tires is if you have a flat. I mean, unless you're, you know, 20 years old and at the peak of your strength, those suckers are heavy. I was amazed uh, at how heavy they were. Once I changed mine all out and I thought, yeah, I, I knew they were gonna be heavy, but I could muscle on through it, right? And I did, but man, it was a struggle trying to lift those things up into the bed. And it's the same thing that you're going to have to do if you need to change that tire. You're going to have to lift it up to put it on the studs and then put your lugs on. What about where you're going to store it? I'm sure if you're out somewhere, particularly if the weather's bad or something, you're probably not going to screw around trying to put it back under the truck. The idea probably would be to lift it up into the bed. And that's when you're going to find out how heavy those things really are. It makes a huge difference. I couldn't believe it myself. So anyway, those are just a few reasons why having larger aftermarket tires, the more aggressive, awesome looking tires, is a bummer. There's just a few things about them that maybe you didn't consider or haven't considered and you're in the market looking for, for some um, that you're gonna have to deal with once you have those aftermarket bigger tires. Leave a comment, let me know. You ever consider any of these things when you got yours or yeah no big deal you're 18 years old and you can lug that thing around like it's no problem and you always carry an air compressor with you i'd be curious to know also real quick i do have two additional channels rob motive mt all about mini trucks currently the 2022 hyundai santa cruz and rob motive jt all about jeep gladiators Check them out, and if you're interested, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.